if they didn't know the journey or what I was doing, mm-hmm. I'm sure they would look at that like, yo, like you're about to be in my wedding party. You're not showing yeah. up to my bachelor. Mm-hmm. What a, like what type of friend are you? Right. right. Um, or like Sammy, it's like, wow, you're my boyfriend and you won't even drive three hours to come see me. Like, and so, you know, there's a lot of that stuff and there was a lot of uncertainty of like, am I giving up these great yeah. life things mm-hmm. at a maybe? The sustainability aspect to me, right? If you love the process, right? More than you love the result. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that's what can keep you going and provide longevity. Mm -hmm. If you're only doing it. So another thing was, you know, I feel like so many athletes, you hear it so often. They're like, no, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. There's no other option. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. and there, I feel like their identity is wrapped up in being a winner. And I remember getting asked in some interview prior to a competition like yo you you think you're gonna win i was like fuck i don't know Mm. like i have very little control over that you know if someone shows up and they just like they're running four minute miles and cleaning jerking 450 well there's not much i can fucking do (laughs) right Mm -hmm. like i'm not gonna just magically start running the four minute mile um so i I said it from a very real perspective of like i hope i win i've been training to win Mm. but i have no fucking idea if i will you know, something could go wrong. My my knee could bend the wrong way. I could break a finger, wh- whatever it is. And it's taken out of your control. Mm-hmm. So you better not wrap yourself up in that identity mm-hmm. of being a winner. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like going into a competition, my comfort blanket is I did everything I could. I did everything as best I could. There's no what ifs. Mm-hmm. What if my diet was better? What if my training was better? What if my sleep was better? Yeah. None of that comes in. Yeah. I'm going in and I'm like, I hope that if I get... Second place, 10th place, 20th place, I feel good about those results. I right, hope my yeah. performance reflects the year of work I just put in. Yeah. Um, you know, the more and more you hear some of the greats, and I, I remember Ali talking about, you know, he'd always talk about, I'm winning, you know, regardless. Mm-hmm. But he, I remember there was a, he had an interview and he said, look, I put in the work and I compete against myself. I'm not competing against the guy yeah. across him. I need to put in the work to where every day I get better and I'm competing against my own results. hundred percent. Right? Yeah. And, and that's sort of similar to hearing other boxers or UFC fighters, specifically those guys that are in one-on-one competitions. Mm-hmm. They're not measuring it against the guy here. If I do the little things that it takes, mm-hmm. I'll be successful. Yeah. I, and then the outcome will be the outcome. I mean, the, the best part, you know, I picked up some things over the years of, you know, listening how to pick up certain things about my competitors mm-hmm. from listening to their interviews. And, you know, everyone's playing their cards close to their chest. Um, in the last couple of years, you know, it's, it's been frustrating because going into every competition, people are saying, yo, do you think you can beat Matt? You think you can beat Matt? And I'm looking at like, why the fuck are you looking at me? I'm yeah. one of 40. Yeah. Like you got to beat everyone here. Right. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as the athlete was like, yes, I've been thinking about, about Matt and training, I'm like, good. Yeah, Dude, I already you've been thinking it. about me this yeah. whole fucking time. I haven't thought about you once, <laughs> right? But you're not focused on you. You're focused on me, yeah. Yeah. and that means most likely, I got you. You're fucked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, man, that's good. So you know, picking up on stuff like that. Um, but like, I remember uh, someone was asking me, like, you know, like, you know, are you going to be okay if you don't win? And I, I said, like, I hope so. I've prepared mm. myself for it. I, I. I imagine myself losing half the time. Mm -hmm. Um, But I kind of brought up like, there's only two options for when you sign up for a competition in any sort of competition. Mm -hmm. You're either going to win or you're going to lose. lose. (laughs) Like every football game. Yeah. There's a winner and a loser. Like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if your identity is wrapped, consumed with being a winner, ooh, like better be good. Yeah. And especially in your guys' situation, like you're only one person. Yeah. On a team. team right? yeah. Like, yeah. like that's why I enjoy like an individual sport. Like I'm responsible. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. just cause like my fucking left guard was out drinking all night. Yeah. Nah, that, like now, now your game is yeah. messed up. Yeah. Right. That guy was You're fucking tight in. Drop the ball. <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't ever drop the ball. Your brother. fullback didn't get that lead block. <laughs> like, Hey man. You know, that you know? didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Safety's got his eyes in the backfield. He's not looking <laughs> over the top. <laughs> no, that's such a good point, though, because and you're, you're speaking to me, man. 
because I, I am somebody that gets wrapped up in the result. Mm-hmm. I'm so focused on that end goal. I'm so focused on that that far out. I mean, don't get I me wrong. Have, don't get me wrong. That end sure. goal is awesome. Yeah, yeah. no, but like, I, yeah, no, no. I, I know what you're saying. It, it, what What's cool about what you're saying is that you you have found the way to enjoy the journey, enjoy the process. Mm-hmm. I think that's what we're all after at a certain point, but it's cool to hear that you have that clarity. I mean, like you hear that corny ass line of, oh, once you find what you love, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. And it's like, I remember growing up, I'm like, no, like everyone hates their job. Mm-hmm. Everyone's miserable. It was just a necessity. It's a necessary evil yeah. to live. Yeah. You need to have that sit in that cubicle, put up with the boss, all that shit. And then, I mean, so I, after the job out in Alberta in the oil fields, it was like, fuck this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go get an education. Yes. Yeah. So I started going to college <laughs> and then I, I worked, a, I worked a summer job uh, at a aerospace engineering company that like, they specialize in like ground to air defense missiles. And I there, was you like, know kind of both ends <laughs> of the spectrum there. Right? I don't either. Being a roughneck so, to a so I went aerospace from, engineer. I went from roughneck and was like, screw this. I'm going to go get an education. Yeah. I got the education. I worked at that aerospace company. I'm like, Screw Yo, this. I'm ground going to air defense missiles. <laughs> I'm going to be a fucking rocket scientist. This is, this is the shit. And then I sat in a cubicle and I had to buy like slacks, belt, oh, shirt oh, sure. tucked in with a tie, um, ID badge. And I went, fuck. No, this. no. Just dude, gray carpet, gray cubicle, uh, gray ceiling. Yeah. And I think the straw that broke the camel's back was like, someone said to me, like, looks like someone has a case in the Mondays. And I was like, <laughs> done yeah i'm gonna go and ahead and need you to get that tps <laughs> report in by saturday and so that that was the that was the first summer that i competed at the games yeah and uh and that that was the summer that like as soon as i started working there mm-hmm. and like when you're doing government contracts it's so much paperwork mm-hmm. yes. it's like i'm like dude i want to build a missile like let me build something cool yeah and i was like no 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 like read through this contract and fill it out and i was like all right I was like, this desk job will be here when I'm 40, yeah. 50, whenever mm-hmm. I want it. I was like, I'm going to go try my hand at this CrossFit thing. And that, that's when I really like pushed the chips yeah. in and so started training. That was what, 2014? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was the summer of 2014. So you had a full-time job your first, how many years competing? Uh, so I had a full-time job that first in 2014. Okay. And then 2015, uh, you were all I kind of threw away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a full-time college student, but, like, man, I, I was eating like shit, training like shit, sleeping like shit. Um, mm-hmm. It was, like, I got second place, and then the guy in first place was retiring, and so I was, like... We all know. I think we know I was, that guy is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I was just, like, dude, I'm second place. He's gone. I'm next up. I'm, I'm getting first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so I think... Once again, that life experience, I didn't know how to handle it at the time, you know, like just got super sad. Didn't want to go to a CrossFit gym. Didn't want to talk cross. I didn't want to train anything. Mm. Um, but then I kind of sat down with a notebook and just did some like self-reflection of like, all right, why did that hurt so much? Because the year prior, I got the exact same results, but and couldn't have been happier. The next year, I got second place again. And it's like crushed me. Mm. Like, why is it? And my conclusion I came up with was that second year of getting second place it reflected the the work i put in yeah. uh, all the cut corners all mm. the like mm. skip training just not putting the effort in outside of the gym and and so it was after that season i was okay no more what ifs because that 2015 season i i finished the season like man what if i wasn't staying up until two in the morning watching mm. netflix what if my diet was good what if my training was consistent you know all these different things and so then going into the 2016 season, I just told myself, like, all right, I have no, I'm not going to have any what ifs. Mm-hmm. I'm a year in the grand scheme of things goes by so quickly. So I was like, I don't care if I'm miserable for one year. I'm going to give myself a bedtime, a wake up time. I'm going to have a, like, what I thought at the time was a proper diet, you know, and mm-hmm. um, just training consistently, you know, all these different things. And so that I was like, if I get second place a third time, there's not going to be a what if in my mind. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be proud of those results. And those are the results I deserve. Those yeah. are the results I was capable of. So, so that year that you went all in, was there any doubt that year? Of, am well, I, I mean, doing it, the right things? It was, am fucking, I... it was fucking terrifying. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> you know, e- even something <laughs> as simple as, so at the time, uh, my fiance, Sammy was living in Providence. And so for most of the year, uh, like every other weekend I would drive to her and then, so once a month I was driving to her to see her for the weekend. And then once, once a month she was driving to me and we're getting close to like, I think it was regionals or the games or something. And, and I just finally said, I was like, Hey, like, I can't do this anymore. I can't sacrifice that because when I'm staying at your place, it's not my bed. It's not the perfect bed. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I'm staying at your place, I'm not training at my gym. It's not the perfect gym. Uh, When I'm staying at your place, my diet isn't perfect. Like all these things that like, yeah, two days away, does it make a difference? Yeah, probably not. But you do that two days away once a month for five months. Mm -hmm. I start adding up, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And, and so, you know, Thankfully for me, Sammy, Sammy's fucking awesome. She was like, okay, like you stay there and I'll come to you every other weekend. So she was doing the drive. Um, But, you know, it was things like that. You know, my best friend is getting married, having a bachelor party. And it's not some like blowout in Vegas. It's like they rented a beach house, Mm -hmm. but there there was a lot of drinking. You know, some guys were sleeping on couches, on floors, that type of thing. I was like, nope, can't do it. Mm, Sorry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they were just... Yeah, I don't know. If they didn't know the journey or what I was doing, mm-hmm. I'm sure they would look at that like, yo, like you're about to be in my wedding party. You're not showing yeah. up to my bachelor. Mm-hmm. What a, like what type of friend are you? Right. Um, right. Or like Sammy, it's like, wow, you're my boyfriend and you won't even drive three hours to come see me. Like, and so, you know, there's a lot of that stuff and there was a lot of uncertainty of like, am I giving up these great yeah. life things mm-hmm. at a maybe? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nothing's guaranteed. You know yeah. what though? How many times did you think about it this way as well? You're in a major competition and, and no offense, Sammy, but you're in a major competition. <laughs> I got you back here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he's about to say, but I don't agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're in this competition and your knee fucking date ain't nobody there to save you. It's fucking you. It ain't the wedding party. And no offense, Sammy, so, but it's not Sammy. It's you. So this is this is another thing that on the competition floor, every other competitor talks about it. Like they, the common question, what do you think about when you're on the competition floor? What do you what are you focusing on? What what gives you strength, hope, the drive? Everyone else, oh, I look up in the crowd and I see my wife, and like I'm doing this for her. Right. I look up in the crowd, I see my coach, and I think about all the hours that he put in for me. It's like yo. No, mm-hmm. you're the one on the floor. Absolutely. Like it and it without like the story behind it, it sounds like a dick move, but you got to be selfish. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're the one on the field. <laughs> he says you're, that all the time. All you're the no. one doing it. So for me, like, yes, what I like, Sammy is a motivator, mm-hmm. but it's a selfish motivator for me mm-hmm. of like, yes, I, I want to do this for her. But I want to do it so I can provide the life, Absolutely. the best life possible that I can to enjoy with her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if, if I want to buy, you know, the dream house or have that freedom when, when we're 40, 50, raising kids. Shit starts with no, you. No, that's fucking, that's, that's, on, that's on yeah. me. That's mm-hmm. I'm the one out here. Yeah. Um, because at a certain point, there's only a certain amount of pain that you're willing to put up with yes, for sir. someone for else. Someone else. Yeah. That, that's but, exactly right. But if, if it's for your own livelihood, no. you'll dig. Well, yeah. gets, uh, I'm telling you, man. And it's no different. Like, you look at the greats that have been the Kobe Bryants or the Michael Jordans. I mean, when they look at it, man, and I've heard them many a times. Hell, I've been out there on the football field in tough situations, and I love – you know, the wife and my mom and all them, mm-hmm. but ain't nobody going to make that open field tackle. Yep. But me. And I got to fill the C gap with a 240 pound fucking fullback. <laughs> and I can't remember my mom being there pushing me through the hole, right? <laughs> you got it's it, just, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's blackout time. You just black out and you do what you do. And, yeah. and I, I think without that perspective, you know, it seems like a very selfish thing. Like it's mm-hmm. the very politically correct answer of like yeah. I'm, I'm doing this yeah. for my wife i'm doing this for my parents that sacrifice so much for me Shit. all the stuff and it's like yes like indirectly that's what i'm doing mm-hmm. i i have the life that i want to live in my head mm-hmm. and if i want to provide that life and that life does include sammy it does include kids it does include a great relationship with my parents mm-hmm. to do that i need to f- 
I need to fucking be selfish. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm not traveling for anyone else. Mm -hmm. I'm not, no, like I can't help you with the fucking chores. I right. can't right. take a weekend to go to your bachelor party. Like all this stuff down the road, it will be worth it. Right. Yeah. Like, That's right. Yeah. Cause if you can't do it for yourself, and and this is the only time I agree with you because you are a selfish asshole. I am. Sure. Sure. He's gonna is, he's so. gonna he's gonna talk about this episode for two years now. <laughs> hey, remember when Matt came Matt, on? Yeah, he said Matt, be so Matt, Matt agreed with me. <laughs> but Matt agreed but, with me. But really though, if you can't do it for yourself, you can't do it for anybody else. Like it's you're not capable. Like you said, that motivation runs out. It run if if like for me in, in my journey and 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 I talked about it early on in this uh, show, but like had I only chased football and played in Canada and the Arena League and the United Football League and all these you know to get to the NFL, if I only did that for my wife who was like Sammy a ride right. or die right. like a ride or die and that's what we call yeah. me by the way, <laughs> but if if. If I, my only motivation was her, there's no way I would have pushed through and those barriers that seemed impossible. Right. So the, the the other thing that I look at too is I don't want my wife to be the one that I'm trying to win for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do I want my wife wanting me to win? Yeah. No, like I like Sammy's a comfort blanket to me of mm -hmm. like going into a competition. I have no fear yeah. mm -hmm. because I'm like, I'm coming home to the same hug, That's the same right. kiss, Man. the same so love, true. whether I bend my knee the wrong way, I get 10th place or I win. Mm -hmm. Sammy doesn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. When we first started dating, I had just come off the 2015 loss. So I'm, I'm the number one loser. Mm. Um, I'm living in my parents' basement. So I'm not You're right. doing well. <laughs> right. uh, Got this flashy keep life. Going, then, keep going. And then on top of it, I convince her to quit her career job at a, like a corporation where it benefits, great work mm. environment, friends, quit that job, move into my mom's basement with me mm. and help me. Wow. And you, we'll, we'll do this thing together. together. Yeah. Awesome. And so now I'm no longer the loser living in my mom's basement. Right. She's the loser <laughs> She's living in her boyfriend's mom's quit basement. Quit her job to move in with her boyfriend. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I can't believe it. Hey, hey, but, but you got that Lululemon athlete discount. Yeah. Get you 25% get you <laughs> off those leggings. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> but I, I remember having a talk with Sammy of like, give me a couple years. Like, live in the trenches with me for a couple years. Mm -hmm. We'll go without any luxuries. We'll go without any, you know, uh, like freedoms of like traveling or all that. I'm like, mm -hmm. give me a couple years and I'll set us up. I'll, I'll like set us up for life. You know, we'll live this selfish life of you don't have a job. I don't have a job. We're both dedicated towards this. And so, I mean, for the last five years, six years, she's yeah. cooked every meal for me. She's mm -hmm. done probably 90% of my body work. Um, you know, like she's come into the PT office. You right. guys know Alex Guerrero? Yeah. Yeah. Like she's come into the office with Alex and I, and Alex is showing her how to do body work on mm. me for these certain trigger points. So she could do it at home. So, so that I don't have to, I don't have to wow. go down to go Boston to work with TB12. Mm. I don't have to fly down to Tampa 99% of the time. Like we got the massage table set up in the living room. And Sammy's doing the wow. body work on me. That's Dang. awesome. She's man. cooking all my meals. She's packing my gym bag with food and supplements, every, everything I need for the day. So when I wake up, I can be as selfish as I can be. Mm -hmm. And I focus on training and competing, nothing else. Sammy, Sammy was taken over as my manager for a long time, just reading through contracts, like oh, make sure nice. I have all my sponsorship obligations, like booking my travel. Because I want to be as selfish as I can and dedicate every fucking waking moment to training and competing. Um, that's amazing. That's man. awesome. Yeah, do you is. think that there's any other way? Rockstar back here. <laughs> like, yes. do you think you, yes. think you I, could I, be I, as good as you are? No. Doing it any other way? No. Okay. No, I've set up my life, uh, you know, so after the 2016 results. So my first year of having no what ifs, I dedicated everything. I not only did I win. Win the world championships, but I won it by the largest margin yep. of victory ever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, shit, that worked. <laughs> I'm going to double down on that. I'm going to find yeah. more things that I can make better, dial in. Next year, bigger margin of victory. Next year, bigger margin of victory. And so it's just every day is like trying to find these new little, yeah. I'm not even at 1% gains anymore. It's mm -hmm. like 0.1%, like mm -hmm. these little mm -hmm. tiny things. So I think... The success I've had in the sport has come from the lifestyle that I've set up for myself. Mm -hmm. um, 
Is it the only way of doing it? No, of course not. Sure not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that if they plop, if we just traded places, you know, the not having any free time or like not dedicating any time to personal enjoyment, well, that would be a detriment to them and it would take away from their performance, you know? Um, I thrive in, I heard Edelman say it and it was like, what was it like the happily miserable? Mm. And like, that's where I thrive. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, God, of just like, well, that's what like Bella, well, Belichick always talks. Yeah. yeah. He talks about thriving in ambiguity. Yeah. Is what he it's always, so true. Though, man. Yeah. I mean, we complain like, because as athletes, we bitch about everything. Yeah. And I'm sure, sure you, I, I mean, it's DB, number, it's DBs number, mostly. No. It's, yeah. the, no, it's, it's, it's the easiest form of conversation. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 It's complaining. Yeah. But that's, and that's how you get through it. And you mentioned earlier, like the chaos is sometimes that's where you're comfortable. Like yeah. well, I'm comfortable when shit is going, you know, when, when you're, when things are moving all over the place, that's when like the great ones seem to feel like, and I'm not going to say I'm great, but that's when the great ones seem to figure out a way to say, okay, I'm going to go right back to my foundation. See, I, I find it like when everything's going perfectly, it's like, all right, well, what do I focus my energy on? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like when I'm in training, everything's going well. I'm like, well, shit, like when I don't feel like I have any weaknesses, when nothing on my body's injured, like everything's going perfectly. I'm like, well, where do I point my energy? Yeah. yeah. But it's as soon as like you find something that's not good or, mm -hmm. you know, there's something going wrong. It's like, I don't have a choice. This that's is right. where I have to point my energy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I, it's in, in those moments of like chaos that, right. you know, that's when you realize like, what matters and what doesn't. Right. You know, it's like cut yeah. that fat out of my day. Let me ask you, I, I don't want to get off topic here. I don't know mm -hmm. tell you where Todd's going. So as your life progresses, even when you go past this, get past this point, you're, you're done with mm -hmm. CrossFit. Are you ever going to be comfortable? Oh, Is no, never, never, ever. You know, like I, when it's looking at like our house, you know, like Sam and I just bought like our dream house up in Vermont and it's the dream land, location, house, garage, everything. I'm, a, I'm already looking at renovations. I'm like, no, I want to make it better. Um, you know, in terms of like financially comfortable. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you guys remember of like the day that you had no money and you're like, dude, if I get 10 grand, oh my I'm God. rich. Uh, yeah. Set. You oh, hit yeah. 10 grand. Well, that ain't shit. Yeah. yeah. The day I have a hundred grand. Right. The day I have a million. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no matter what number you hit, as soon as you hit it, you're like, nah, not, not anymore, <laughs> yeah. now anymore, now uh anymore. -huh. Yeah. Um, and so I've, I've had a lot of talks with people about that of like, especially like the, like financial stability mm -hmm. of like, what number do you need to hit to be financially comfortable? Yeah. You know, and a lot of it depends on like what type of lifestyle you want to live mm -hmm. and all yeah, that. Yeah. And thing, that's, and that's a good point because, you know, yeah, you came from a very humble beginning and upbringing and 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 so you learn to live with nothing and and it's hard it's it's easy to say oh well, i came from nothing i can go back i don't need much but then you get used to certain things right yeah so and, yeah, I'm, no. i mean i don't even want to say that i came from nothing like my like yeah my mom was a doctor so like they raised us to know the value of a dollar yeah right. yeah um so it's like we never had the we had the smallest house in the neighborhood uh we were the one of the only families that only drove used cars mm -hmm. but like we had a camp mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. went on vacations you know mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah but it was like we were always very well aware of how much of what my mom had to go through to earn a dollar That's right, right. Yeah. um so it's like up yeah. at camp like we always had something with a motor mm -hmm. whether it's dirt bike four-wheeler that type of thing but it was always used mm -hmm. you know so like like those are my spending habits. So like the right. idea of going out and buying a new brand new car, I'm like, well, no, 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 I'll go buy the one that has a dent on it. And yeah. I'm perfectly happy with that. <laughs> you know, like yeah. spending money on clothes. Like, well, now that you get free clothes, it's going to be impossible for you to go back <laughs> to buying clothes, by the way, just, oh. just a heads up. Oh, I'm well aware. <laughs> yeah. um, I've had like Nike's had some talks with me of like, <laughs> please stop wearing those clothes. <laughs> like, <laughs> you got like, new stuff, you know? So, you <laughs> so that, that was another like 1% thing of like, uh, you know, I heard, I think it was, I think it was Bill Gates was like, you know, you can only make so many decisions in a day before you get decision fatigue. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, I take my outfit out of that equation. Yeah. Mm. Um, he's like, 
I found a pair of mm-hmm. pants I like, and I bought a hundred pairs of them. A shirt I like, I bought a hundred <laughs> pairs. So as soon as I started working with Nike, I was like, well, shit. Yeah. I found this pair of pants. I'm like, yo, let me get 10 <laughs> pairs of these. Yeah. Pair of shorts I like, let me get 20 pairs. Underwear, socks, t-shirts. Yeah. Keep it the same, brother. Yeah. All my outfits are the same. Mm. Um, and it was just, for me, it was one less decision to make. Yeah. But growing up, it was like, I wore a t-shirt until it was like embarrassing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Until yeah. there's like a whole giant hole or stains or whatever. And so that those are the habits that I carried on. Yeah. And so like specifically these one this one pair of pants that I trained in for like five years. And finally Nike was like, yo, we stopped making those pants three <laughs> years ago. Please stop wearing them. They're like, they're like, dude, those things are so worn thin. Like you've trained in them every day for four years. Right, Please yeah. stop wearing them. I was like, yeah. I I guess, but like they're still good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like I'm like, fine, I'll stop wearing them now, but like when I'm old, I'll pull, like, I put them in a trash bag and, like, put them in my, like, storage <laughs> container. I'm like, you can't throw them away. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you no. can't get really, even get growing rid up, of it's like, once, gonna, you, once your t-shirt's trash, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I'll use it next time I'm working on the cars and oil. Yeah, for shirt. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a work shirt. Yeah, yeah. I Dude, mean, I've got bins and bins in my attic oh, of yeah. just old football gear. Oh, I'll race. never open again, but I'm like, I know that I'm going to need a sweatshirt. Yeah. And, I, and it's yeah. up there. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. perfectly good. Here's something I got to ask, man. I, you know, I'm sitting here, you got the t-shirt you're wearing, it's got your signature on a Nike mm-hmm. shirt and you're in, I mean, it's, there's no dispute. You're the best CrossFitter in the world. Thank you. And so I've just got to wonder, like Darren's won three Super Bowls. You've mm-hmm. won five, you know, championships. Not many people know what it's like to be the best in the world. Mm-hmm. Does that even compute to you that you're the best in the world? Does it even hit you yet? Or are you just so focused on what you got to do to keep doing it? Um, I think for the most part, it's like, I'm so focused on what I'm doing. Um, but on the, and I think part of it too is that like, it's not just that end goal that is the prize. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I get to work as hard as I want to work. You know, mm-hmm. like I love the process, especially the last couple of years. You know, I got uh, like a coach that, you know, I just vibed with so well. I have a training partner that is the most like-minded person I've ever met, you know, it's like my reflection as a female counterpart Mm -hmm. is Mm. Tia. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, like for years, I just trained by myself. Right. Literally like in a basement gym, it was like 175 square feet with like five foot 11 ceilings. So like I couldn't even do an overhead lift. Like my knuckles hit. Mm. Um, But I mean, this tiny little thing and like I saw that I'm like, I'll make a fucking champion in here. Yeah. Mm. I was by myself. Yeah. It's nice trying to train by yourself because you're not it's on hard. anyone else's schedule. You're not working on anyone else's weaknesses. You mm. get to be selfish, mm-hmm. but it wears on you. Yep. Um, so, I mean, training with them, like I get to wake up and I get to go hang out with yeah. two awesome people every single day. Um, mm. I get like, Sam and I have it all the time. Like we'll be traveling the world. And I remember like one trip where we're sitting on this private beach in australia six mile beach where the only people there were the only people staying on this island and like we're sitting on the beach and watching these whales breach mm. just like, I was like how the fuck did we get here <laughs> like this was not supposed to be our life right this, this was not supposed to be my life yeah. for sure right. i was like i went from being like a roughneck to a to an engineer yeah. like i was supposed to be working a desk job you know like right. and i would have been content it was a fact of life like right. this is the job you need to work um, so I, I look at those moments and that's like what hits me of like these beautiful opportunities of mm-hmm. like, I've made my best friends in the CrossFit space. I met Sammy in the CrossFit space, like all these amazing things mm-hmm. giving me these opportunities and this freedom. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. May, maybe one day it'll change when I'm like telling my kids about what, what your dad used to do or right. something back in the day. Mm-hmm. But right now, I mean, it's yeah. a, it's a tremendous sense of pride, but not because of the, the final achievement. Right. It's because of like yeah. what I did leading mm-hmm. up to it. Mm-hmm. So let me, are, are you, you're in the moment right now. And I can tell just by the way the conversation has gone, like right now, as far as CrossFit is concerned, where your life is right now, you're in the moment. You're not thinking about 10 years from now. Right now, what's your thought process going into this year, I mean, if you're in the moment, the way mm-hmm. you know, I, I feel like you are. What's what's your thought process moving? No, forward? I mean, I definitely do put some thought into like future plans and mm-hmm. what I want down the road. 
Um, but I had, I had a conversation with, I think it was an accountant a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is probably five or six years ago. And I was looking at buying, I was, I was putting in an offer on a triplex mm-hmm. and I was going to live in one unit and rent out the other yeah, two. Right. Um, and I was like, this is the responsible thing to do. This is what people have told me, invest your money, you know, buy real estate, mm-hmm. all these things. And, uh, and so I, I like went to him and I'm like, Hey, like, should I take out a mortgage? Should I pay cash? What should I do here? And he, and he was just like, what the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. I was like, I thought I was doing like a proper adult thing, <laughs> like <laughs> investing my money. And, uh, and he was like, if everything goes perfectly, how much are you going to profit off this? And I was like, I, I think it came out to like 24,000. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's with me living in one of the units. And he's like, cool. He's like, how much will it cost you if you have the worst tenants ever? They call you every night at 2 a.m. Yep. You know, the furnace goes out, the plumbing, bra- everything goes wrong. Basically, he's like, how much will it cost you if you lose because this is a distraction? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I yeah, get it. Right. And he was like, and then he was like, you make your money competing, go compete. That's right. Do nothing else, laser focus in on this. Yeah. He's like, the real estate will be there when you're done. Mm-hmm. That will be there. Like, all these things will be there when you're done. Mm-hmm. But your life as an athlete is so short. Right. Go get everything out of it that you can. Right. Yeah. And I was just like, okay. That's yeah. so insane. Y'all man. are cut from the same cloth, by the way. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that was, that was you and That was me. Same, same exact way is, is just, you know, knowing my place and what I wanted to get accomplished. And I wasn't going to be a doctor or a fucking mm-hmm. lawyer. This is what I did. So I want to go off of that. I mean, your legacy, you know where your legacy is. And I, and I still feel like there's that part of you that, you know, one of the problems a lot of people have is that we all know we're in a window. We have a window of opportunity. And I, I don't you, think everyone knows that. Yeah, exactly. They don't. Like, I don't, yeah. they don't. But this is what I'm saying. The special ones. If you listen to the special ones that, that are competitors. There is a moment that you have that you're saying, I have to take advantage of this moment because I know where I am. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk on your legacy. You know, your legacy, as, I mean, I know you probably don't know this. But you probably have no idea about this, but you're five-time, five-time CrossFit champion. That's fucking huge, right? So I want to talk about the legacy of where you are, Matt, and that legacy being, you know, what are you taking away from it right now? Because there's so much more greatness in you. So what are you, how are you perceiving moving forward? <sighs> That shit got deep. I was like, <laughs> real, got real deep, deep. Real deep. Um, you know, in terms of like, if if I am to have a legacy, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that's up to the individual. I think that's kind of up to, you know, the fans, the loved ones, or like how people are re- remember you. I don't know mm-hmm. if I have any control on something like that. Um, and I, I don't know what it, what it will be. Um, because I've held, I've held on to like, like I've played my cards so close to my chest. Um, so like I've never released my programming. I've never released so much of like the stuff I do day to day. Um, like how I have my home life set up all these different things. I've just kept them close. Cause I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to give my competitors any That's hints. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I, I think in terms of that, in terms of like, my direct impact on CrossFit as a sport or anything like that. I, I don't know how the crowd perceives me when I'm on the competition floor. Yeah. I don't know how they perceive my interviews. I know my intent is good. I know what I'm trying to put forward is good. How it's received, I don't have much control over that. The one thing I think is like unanimous across the board is like, I want to be the hardest worker, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm, that's right. Yeah. Hard work pays yeah. off. Right. Um, I don't think it's like, I don't think the average person realizes it to the extent of like the power that they have. You know, like before I started CrossFit, like I, I still consider myself a very average person. Mm-hmm. I still like very mm-hmm. average shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but the regular person that just punches the nine to five clock that goes home to the wife, like, you know, just like, can't afford the car, can't afford the house, all mm-hmm. these different things. It's like, you're in control of that. That's right. You're in control of your own happiness. Like, if you have an interest, and you know, it's the, I always hear it like, oh, I would love to do this. I would love to learn how to play guitar. 
well, go fucking learn. Right. <laughs> like, right. start on YouTube lessons, talk yeah. to people. Like, there's going to be someone you know in your circle that plays guitar. Like, yeah. get lessons. You know, start taking steps today to where you want to be in five years. Right. Um, you know, like, a lot of people assume, like, the hard work pays off. That came from CrossFit. It came from when I was in college. Like, when I first started UVM, mm-hmm. I wasn't a good student. I've failed my first couple couple exams. Like, I wasn't doing well. And then I was like, fucking A. Like, I don't have another path. I'm not going to the Olympics. I need <laughs> right. this education. That's right. Like, I need yeah. it. Um, and so it was just like, all right, well, what, what do I need to do? Well, I need to learn this stuff. And it was thermodynamics. Just And I was like, I don't even... I'm so dumb at this class. I don't know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know where to start. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to go to the library and read this, the textbook. I'm just going to read it cover to cover. Right. And then like write down any word that I read that I didn't know what it was. Look it up and then read it again, you know? And, and then I just saw the results from that and like how hard I worked towards that one task. And then the next exam came out and I set the curve for the class. Mm -hmm. And, like, just that feeling of, like, not only, like, taking a test isn't, isn't a competition, but it kind of is. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, oh, for yeah. sure. I was, like, this wasn't a competition, but, like, I just won. Right. And yeah. that felt amazing. Well, if they keep score, it's a competition. Yeah. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. um, That's your mama. Well, you yeah. know what I love about what you said there? It's so It sounds so simple, but for some reason we overcomplicate. You had a problem. You didn't really know exactly how you're going to fix the problem, but you just did something. You took some sort of action. Maybe it wasn't the right action. Who knows? So the, but you did something. The best thing I learned from college was how to learn. I couldn't do mm. a fucking derivative now. I couldn't do an integral. I couldn't do the Who's most. What? What is, is it, huh? <laughs> slow down. Hold on. Slow down. I couldn't do <laughs> the most basic it. heat transfer equation at all. But what I took away from college was I learned how to learn. I realize like i don't know this well let's figure out what about it i don't Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. and and so like by the end of my engineering degree it was like i would sit in a lecture and you know there'd be a half dozen words that he said that i'm like that went over my head i'd jot them down or you know i'd read the chapter and find what don't i know in Mm -hmm. this and then go go research each one of those individually Mm -hmm. and then read that chapter again right um and so same thing with like anything that i do physically in crossfit of like all right well what was it about that event that i didn't do well in Mm -hmm. you know was it the cardio aspect the weightlifting the technique skill work whatever it was all right what about that was you know the weightlifting like if you guys have done a clean and jerk or a snatch it's been years yeah it's like (laughs) but but you know break myself (laughs) it's like how many of those guys are capable of lifting so much more? <sighs> yeah. So it's like, what's their bottleneck? Their yeah. bottleneck is their technique. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you, you're missing that lift. The easiest solution is I need to get stronger. Right. I, I couldn't lift that weight, so I need to get stronger. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, take that one step back, learn that technique. Like, and then yeah. So you yeah. Know, you're learning how to learn, learning how to break down yeah. that weakness into just the most micro daily dose thing. Yeah. And, and uh, not fe- being afraid to be messy either. Right. Just start. Just just go. Figure it out as you go. The most valuable lessons come from mistakes. Yeah. Like yeah. I've never I've never touched anything and been good at it the first time or oh, like man. been great at it the first time. Yeah. Um, but everything that I now love were all things that I was so shit at. Yeah. And then you get that that gratification when you practice it for like five minutes and you see the results. Yeah. Oh shit. I got better after five minutes. Mm -hmm. Let me go practice for an hour. Let me go practice for a week, month, year. Um, and you see those results coming back. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It it applies to everything. And the humility even just to say like, Hey, I don't know it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I'm not great at it right now. And to recognize that as opposed to, uh, no, 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 it's just not for me. And then going somewhere else and looking, mm-hmm. if you're always running mm-hmm. from the solution, you're never going to find it. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, man, I, you, I you mentioned, that. you mentioned something about your training partner mm-hmm. in 2021. Now in our research, we discovered your training partner moved, right? Or is right that, now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Short term. Yeah. Yeah. She, so, she's over in uh, South Korea right now. Okay. Yeah. She's doing bobsledding, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So pretty, pretty wild story. So in 2016, uh, she came second place. So she came, so exact same track record as me second place in 2015, 
through the roof excited about it. Second place in 2016, like depressed about it. Mm-hmm. She After that, she went to the Olympics for weightlifting. She competed in Rio. Then did four years of winning the games. Like most dominant female yeah. to ever touch the floor. Mm-hmm. Like she's in a league of her own. And then she's like bookending those four years with a winter yeah, Olympics. Olympics. Yeah, so. <laughs> she, she's trying it. She, she's trying out for the team. Yeah. Uh, Oh, she'll, like, make yeah. she'll yeah, make so it. She'll make it. I mean, if if she doesn't make it, I would love to meet the specimen that beats. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with twenty twenty one, obviously the pandemic, the the competition changed a little bit, right? The opens a little bit shorter this year. Is that right? Yeah, I just saw it the other day. Um, yeah, it's like the open instead of five weeks, it's three weeks. I think it's pushed back to March mm-hmm. or, or something like Does that. Does your training change? I mean. You won't say it, but you're you're past the point of being worried about the open. But does your training change at all based um, on that? Oh no, I I, I worry. Oh, do you okay. about every mm-hmm. stage? Yeah. I I train scared yeah. every day. <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, I I'm always I'm always picturing my competitor's best case scenario happening. I'm always picturing my worst case scenario happening. Um, but uh, yeah. I mean, we. I just found out about the new season, mm-hmm. like. I don't know, a couple days ago, like a week ago, maybe. Um, so I haven't really sat down and put together an attack plan. Yeah. So that that's one thing, like, especially like this last year or every year for like the last like four years, there's been changes in the season. Um, some, some small, some big, but you always hear some rumors prior to um, of, oh, I heard there, you can qualify for the games out of the open or they're changing regionals from three qualifiers to five or they're combining regions. They're going canceling regionals going to sanction every year there's something Mm -hmm. and and every person playing the what if game right what well you know like should i be moving regions should Mm -hmm. like they're trying to play the guessing game figure out what might happen and they're not worried about what they they're wasting in control they're wasting time because Mm -hmm. it's like none of that's actually happening Mm -hmm. um and so for the last couple of years, I've gotten pretty good at it of like, just not caring mm-hmm. of any rumors. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the day you tell me the rules, I will sit down with my team and we will put together a plan. Mm-hmm. But until we have facts in writing, I'm not, I'm not giving yeah. it an mm-hmm. ounce of yeah. effort. Mm-hmm. So right now, like the open, I think it's first or second week of March. I'm, I'm just in my phase right now. I'm still not training really. Like yesterday, Sam and I did 15 minutes in and out of the gym. Mm. Like yeah. that was with warm up. Wow. Uh, wow. So it's, it's just knock, knocking yeah. off the rust. Yeah, uh, I worked your ass yesterday, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, oh, I worked you. You <laughs> outworked the fittest man yeah, in the world. I got you yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> My 16 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's another thing we got to ask. You know, Rich Froning was a guest of ours when we first started this yeah. show. And, and you're in Cookville, which is obviously Rich's hometown. What's y'all's relationship like, you and Rich? Yeah. Wow. Well, that, that, some that, that not there. a good question? <laughs> trying to think how to answer this tactfully. I've lived in Cookville for three years, and Rich hasn't spoken to me in about two and a half. Really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. I, I asked around about what happened, or like, you know, I was really concerned about it at first. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I still have never gotten an answer, but yeah. I've, I've, since he did it to me, I've seen him do it to three or four other people where he just excommunicated them. Hmm. Um, so after my first first time when we first moved there, um, I lived there like maybe a couple months, like five, six months. Um, and there was just some weird shit that went on. And I was kind of like, you know, I tried to talk to him, try to mm-hmm. give him an out of like, hey, man, like still cool right like i don't know what's happening and uh no confrontation wouldn't tell me what he was thinking doing nothing never gave me a reasoning for like why i got kicked out of everything and uh and so i I went to my neighbor and just gave him the key to the house i was like hey like here's key to the house just if there's a package on the doorstep put it in but i'm getting the fuck out of here and so sam and i just packed up the truck that day went to Vermont for the summer and we weren't planning on going back, but then Shane and Tia mm-hmm. moved mm-hmm. back or moved, moved to Cookville as well. And, uh, 
it's been really odd. Um, you know, like, so this season we had two online competitions. Uh, we were not allowed to do them at Mayhem. Really? Yeah. And wow. quarantine hit. Uh, and so, like, Tia kept her relationship with Rich. Like, they, they were good. I was like, yeah. I, don't, I don't want you to be part of my whatever this is. I, yeah. I didn't even know. You don't know. even know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then it was when the quarantine hit and all that. And, like, Mayhem was never getting shut down. Like, we were still right. training there every day. All the members are still there. And uh, and then Tia texts Rich and was like, hey, like, Matt and I are still good to train there, right? And he was like, nope. Mm. And Tia was like, wait, are you serious? Like, we got a competition coming up. Like, we can't train there. And he's like, nope, no one can train there. It's not fair to the paying members that some people are there and then some people aren't. And we're like, oh, okay, we get that. Cool. Like, that that's a very good stance. Uh <laughs> So we, we make plans. We're going to Kentucky for a month to like go train. Uh, we, we got our own little quarantine set up. And then Tia went into the gym to pick up a piece of equipment. Gym was packed. Mm. And it was, it was Rich and all his friends. Huh. Uh, and like they, Tia was like, dude, they froze like deer in headlights because they realized they all got caught in a lie of they, they wanted to be able to train at the gym. Uh-huh. And so if I'm in Cookville and training at Mayhem, Rich won't won't come to the gym, won't talk to me. His train won't his team won't come there to train. Nothing. Really? As and no explanation. Just nothing. Wow. What's that competition? I mean, I know there's been an inner competition based on, you know, you guys going head to head. So you were you weren't in your prime. You were coming up when Rich was in his prime, correct? Yeah, twenty fourteen. Like I was it was your first year, right? Yeah. First yeah. year. I'm training a couple times a week, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it was just like, I was, I was a rookie. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, this is how much of a rookie I was. There was one day, I think there was four events and I thought I was like, after three events, I was like, man, this is so convenient. I haven't been hungry all day. It's so nice. That I don't have to waste time eating. <laughs> and then like the last event is like <laughs> nighttime, like the lights are on right. in the tennis stadium. And I remember standing on the starting mat. And being like, I could curl up on the floor right here and just fall asleep right now. Mm. Um, like, yeah, so, I mean, I wasn't eating during the competition. Like, right. I was such a rookie that the swim that year, I side the entire thing. <laughs> I couldn't put my face in the water and swim. I had to, like, side no the, the, li- the lifeguard swim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dog paddle. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. so, for years... Um, you know, I have my I have my thoughts on the situation, but I've never been anything but respectful when people mm. try to create the comparison mm-hmm, of right. like you versus rich, you versus rich, and and I was always trying to be polite and be like, yo, know, like he had his career, uh, I had mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no need to compare them. Um, and the big thing too was like how much the sport has changed. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, oh you look gosh. at the yeah, weight, how have they? The, how has the sport changed? I mean, like <laughs> looking at what the athletes are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you look back, uh, well, I've seen some highlights of 2008 and it's, <laughs> it's a night and well, day I mean, difference I mean, 2008 or and whatever, then, 2010, like, once it started getting more popular and taking a bit more seriously, but you know, like, wow, oh, one of the events, it was like a clean and jerk ladder. So all they're doing is one clean and jerk every 90 seconds. And the top clean was 350, 350, no, 355, uh, for a single, mm-hmm. only two mm-hmm. guys cleaned it, and then like Rich couldn't clean it. Mm-hmm. Rich did three forty-five, I think. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to like twenty seventeen, it was we have we have to do a clean double at three fifty-five at the end of a workout oh. in the like at the end of a full metcon. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know back in the day, I remember. Like that 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 clean and jerk ladder too. Like most people started like two fifty five or two seventy five. You look at the snatch ladder today. You got like if you're not starting at two seventy five, it's like jeez, that's it. Like <laughs> starting are we talking at deadlifts? Are we talking to- <laughs> I, I think I think it was like twenty eighteen. There was like a half dozen guys that all all were trying to snatch three hundred. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like, that was a legit clean and jerk just a handful of years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've always tried to separate those two of like, mm-hmm. he had his career. I'm having mine. I don't want to start a pissing match, anything. And uh, like, we even tried starting this thing, like Fraser Froney versus the world. And like, we were partnering up with different brands and like Rich and I would do a team workout. And then if anyone could just grab a partner, if they could beat that time, they would get this prize. And like, they were legit prizes, yeah. Yeah. but we knew no one's it's going to have to yeah. be like your absolute wheelhouse <laughs> workout to yeah. beat us in this. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know, one day it just happened. I got taken out of a group, the group chat with the whole team. Uh, like mm. uh, anyone, there were multiple people that trained with me for one day. Rich would see them training with me, kick them out of the group chat. Uh, people that oh I would gosh. work with. Uh, we did a yeah. did a thing. He worked with me, and it was someone that had previously worked with Rich. Kicked them out, and and so I still I've never gotten an answer. Wow, Man. never mm. gotten anything. Uh, yeah, see it, that's it's that's unfortunate. Real, you know, like of course it is. I mean, yeah. it's we're we're living in the same. Same town. Same yeah, town. it's not a big town, right? I mean, it's. <laughs> but I mean, the two the two most recognizable yeah. figures in a in a sport that's really still in its infancy, right? So it's only yeah. been around, you know, a decade and a half, right? I mean, that's like saying, I don't know, I I just think that's unfortunate because the impact that that could be made together, right? Like, no, you don't have to be best friends. Like, look, no, people, yeah. like that's not what I'm saying, but like, there there's got to be if nothing else, a mutual respect, right? Like he did what 100%. he did and he was ahead of his time and then, but like it's escalated and you've escalated and you've carried the torch and you've taken the sport to another level. Like there's gotta be just like, like Jordan's got to respect LeBron. He Jordan may never admit that LeBron could be better than him. Mm-hmm. And LeBron's never going to admit that Jordan was better than him, and but there's a mutual respect that like we're the greatest to ever do it. And, and, and that, that's another thing was like, if, if you're a competitor in your sport and you're winning, I better hope that you think you're the greatest to ever do it. Yeah. And that you're the absolutely. best yeah. at mm-hmm. the time, you know, whatever it is. And so it's like, I, once again, I've always tried to like answer it tactfully yeah. of like people being like, yo, do you think, do you think you're better? Of course I think I'm better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. if he doesn't think he's better than me, I would be disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like I'm, that, that's, that's, uh, I, 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 I thought there was a great opportunity there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when, when I moved there, I saw the potential yeah. for there to be conflict. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think that's, you know, look. And so, so I, when, I, I, go ahead. when, oh, when I moved to Tennessee, uh-huh. Sam and I left our apartment in Vermont, left yeah. the gym. We didn't bring any gym equipment. We left everything set up in Vermont. Yeah. So that if that situation came up, huh. we could. Huh. Okay. Um, and so it was, it came up, you know, the, if T and Shane weren't there, I would have I would have moved yeah. out yeah. after six months. Yeah, uh, but it was like we got back from the one competition, and just like I gave it was Chris Henshaw who was my neighbor, my aerobic coach. I just gave him a key, and I was like, "Hey, we're leaving for the week, but I don't think I'm ever coming back." Wow. Um, like, do you mind handling like paperwork if it comes up or something? Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, "Yep, totally." And then uh, there were some people. There are people from cookville that i know that are like give you the shirt off their back Mm -hmm. and gain nothing from it like great great people and i was like chris henshaw was talking to some of them of like they're like oh where's matt i haven't seen him in a couple weeks and he's like they're like he moved he like he left all his shit in tennessee and got out like why would he why would he stay here yeah after how he's been treated and this and this and this and, and they're like oh i didn't realize that and so like the situation got a bit better but uh, yeah. I mean, like Sam and I are down in Austin looking looking for houses. Like we're getting we're getting out of Cookville. It's yeah. Come on, Texas, Texas, man. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. You're, you're a little too but, far south, though. Come to Dallas. <laughs> 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 but look, you know what? I, I think that's honestly, I, I think that's like the natural progression with tension. I mean, because look, you're talking about two of the greatest to ever do it, right? Yeah. But I, and I'm not saying there's got there should be a mutual respect. But when you put two alphas in a room, you put two alpha dogs in a room who are the best of the best. I couldn't put LeBron and, and Jordan in the same room and think that they're both not going to say I was the greatest. And there was going to be some mutual tension. It's just yeah, but, it's innate. But you ever seen two alphas 
sit in a room and one give the other one the silent treatment. Like, I'm like, yo, like, if you like me, cool. If you don't like me, cool. Like, that's right. fine. If you want to fight, let's fucking go. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me but, know where you stand. Yeah. But the amount of people, like, in the CrossFit space that have, like, sneakily gone out of their way to try to, like, derail my career mm -hmm. or, like, just put roadblocks in, anything like that. Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty shocking, some of the names that would wow. come up. But, I mean, it was stuff like that of, like, we're doing an online competition, and it's like, go go back and watch Tia's footage. Like, I ended up withdrawing from the Rogue competition. But, like, Tia's doing her Rogue Invitational competition. Tia's going to win. We all know it. Yeah. She's going to get all the camera time, mm -hmm. and she's sitting under a CrossFit calf killer banner. And everyone's like, where's, where's yeah. Mayhem? Where's Mayhem? And it's like, we weren't allowed to compete at Mayhem. Wow, that's, uh, that's amazing. And it wasn't, even, it wasn't even like a month prior, they're like, hey, guys, like, you know that online competition you got coming up. Like, you can't do it here. Okay. So make, make some arrangements. It was like, you just didn't even know. It was like three days before competition. Oh, We're yeah. starting to go through like our process. And it was like, so did you have to throw a whole setup together or did you just go to another, you went to another so, gym? So we found another gym that was like, uh, 15, 20 minutes away, mm -hmm. uh, Calf Killer CrossFit. Yeah. yeah. Sparta, Tennessee. It's right down the road. Yeah. Sparta? Yeah. And they, I mean, yeah, cool fitting, name, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> And I mean, the, the owners there were just like. I was going to say, yeah, the, the two <laughs> greatest want to use my gym. Yeah, they were just like, yeah, like wh whatever you need. Yeah. And we're like, all right, like send us your class schedule yeah. so we can come in on off hours so we're not interrupting your class or your members or anything. And they were like, oh, we already no, canceled it. We, we did. <laughs> I just sent a, I sent a group text out now. It's canceled for the week. So, so the first thing was like, they were like, why would we want you to not come in when members are here? Like, please yeah. come in when yeah. members are here. They'll get, a, they'll get a kick out of watching yeah. you train. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're like, okay, that's unique. Yeah. Like, or that's mm. new for yeah. us. And then the other part was like, when we had a competition, mm -hmm. we're like, hey, we're going to show up Friday night to set up equipment, all this stuff. Uh, so we'll show up after your last class and then we compete Saturday, Sunday. And they're like, oh, we canceled everything for Thursday, Friday. Like, mm. the members are all good with it. Like, they understand what's going on. So it was kind of like... They, they treated us so well. That's, right. um, That's awesome. Any equipment they didn't have, we just bought and like uh, set it up there. And then like mm -hmm. after the one competition, like we leave them like a rogue echo bike or plates or whatever it is. So we're, we're trying to say thank you. We're, we can't say yeah. thank you for how much they did for us. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. That's awesome, yeah. man. I love that. You didn't need, See, but any, you didn't need any more fuel. Seriously, you didn't need no more fuel, man. Yeah. <laughs> so are you, are you going to try to double his <laughs> weight? So eight championships instead of four. <laughs> my my favorite line I have it printed in my garage is "Success is the best revenge." Mm. Yes. And how many times people have tried to go out of the way? You know, whether it's like bad mouthing or yep. just trying to yeah. derail you. And I was like, yeah. okay, yeah. Yep. I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah. And to piss you off, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna accomplish what yeah, i set out right. for it. well and think about the energy i mean y you wear the same outfit on a daily basis right to yeah. save energy for what really matters right think about the energy suck that that you could have been drawn into mm -hmm. and whether it was calculated by the other side or not mm -hmm. right if you'd have bought into it that would have been the result right like yeah. that would have been an energy suck like that has does nothing to get me another championship mm -hmm. in 21 right? exactly so you know what i'm just and guess what the, the bonus of it is more success. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. The bonus, the bonus of my success is just that it pisses you off. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not doing it for that reason, but I definitely That's like that reason. Yeah. That's a bonus. Yeah. All yeah. right. So you mentioned, you mentioned kids and you mentioned all that, man. I'm going to get personal on, on, on the family right. side. What's, what's kind of the vision uh, with you guys and, and what's, uh, what's next steps as a family? Oh man. Sammy, you want to, you want to chime in on this one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested yeah, to hear what you say. Spot. Good setup, Tyler. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, uh, okay, right, I'm not the one that you. asked yeah. the Rich Frody question. Yeah, I had no idea, by the way, what I was stepping into. That, that, that's Good. the thing is, like, no, nobody knows. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is the first time I've ever said anything okay. publicly yeah. okay. about that. Just Darren because, Woodson show for breaking news. Well, I'll, I mean, I'll say this right now, and we'll talk, but, like, if that's something that you want, we'll cut all this yeah, out. So, Oh, no, no, yeah. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with yeah. it. Like, like, I remember I sat down, like, and was like, all right, when this comes out, which it yeah. inevitably will, yeah. how do I want to approach it? And I was like, I'm not going to give any of my own opinions on the matter. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. only going to say facts yeah. so yeah. that, like, mm -hmm. I, like I, I can go for days. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, um, I'm sure. 
and we'll do like, we'll, but, we'll we'll do that over at a campfire yeah. sometime. <laughs> so like so much of that is my opinion. So that's yeah. my interpretation. It's yeah. not fact. It's not the truth. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's the truth, but yeah. it's not the truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like. Like that, that was just like kind of surface yeah. level. Yeah, like, no, no, no. Oh, no but again, good. we, you know, yeah. we respect you too much to ever, yeah. you know, yeah. put well, you Well, us in three jackasses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First one to tell us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so for, for family, I mean, uh, you know, we've started putting some of the ducks in a row of uh-huh. like, you know, we know we want to be back in Vermont. Yeah. Uh, Long term. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, right at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, we found our dream house, like, dream location it's on 17 acres it's like stone throw from town so it's like it's out in the countryside so it's like all right we know we want to raise kids in that type of scenario so like we bought that we'll move there this summer uh for a little bit but you know in terms of like raising kids i want to give kids the same opportunities that i had you know my parents didn't put themselves a single time through my childhood yeah uh you know they they drove the the older cars, they wore the the shittier clothes, like all these things to give my brother and I the opportunities. Yeah, like right. if if we wanted to play instruments, you know, I had a drum set, my brother had a saxophone. We did that. And then, you know, my brother with painting and music and art, all these different things for myself, it was traveling for weightlifting competitions, going skiing on the weekends. Like we had every opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know what that looks like for our kids. But I, I just want to give them the opportunities to try whatever yeah. they want to try. Do you think you're going to try to get your CrossFit career, get that to the end before you do kids? Yes. Like your parents? Yeah, that, that was a yeah. decision that we had. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, same, same enough, I mean, we've sat down a lot of times and had the hard talks of like, you know, what every, everything from like, when did we want to start a family? When did we actually want to officially get married mm-hmm. um you know where do we want to live how do we want to live what are our spending how ha- everything mm. um how do you do that you know, <laughs> it's, it's, you know well let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> but, but the one the one yeah. thing that we yeah was a very easy easy decision was that when when we have kids i want it to be like how my parents raised yeah. me of like the day yeah. they had kids their skating career was yeah. over yeah. you know mm-hmm. like now their life revolves around kids and yeah. giving That's that awesome. life um and so part of it is I want to dedicate everything yeah. to training while I'm training. I don't want to have any what ifs of like, oh, you know, what if I wasn't up changing diapers or yeah. any of that? I want to dedicate the time and effort that I feel is needed. Yeah. Um, I never want to compete just to compete. Yeah. I want to compete to try to be the best. Right. Um, but then the other thing is like, not only is it going to take your time away from the gym, but like, I don't want to be that dad that like, the kids don't see for mm-hmm. weeks at a time or wh- whatever it is, you know, yeah. I want them to be the priority. Yeah. So, so, and then with the competition season, we don't know what we're getting right yeah. year to year, month to month right. type thing. Like, I mean, especially 2020 who saw this one coming. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, we want to wait until like the competition career mm. is done yeah. and then, and then we'll, yeah. Are you, are you going to be the guy that has to be carried off the floor? When you're done, how will you, how will you know when I've, you're done? I've always said, and this is from, from my weight and career, as long as I'm happy and healthy. Mm-hmm. So those are the two check marks. I, I don't want to be one of these athletes that's walking with a limp for the rest of his mm-hmm. life. I don't. And then I, I saw how I ended my weightlifting career. And it was with so much resentment mm-hmm. that like, it was this piece of my life for 10 years. And then I wanted nothing to do with it. I didn't want to have the conversations about it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to be any around that was doing it. like, mm-hmm. and so like, I, I see this, like I have, I'm having the second opportunity with a sports career that I'm like, well, no, I want to love this mm-hmm. when I walk away. So I, I'm, I'm sure it will make walking mm-hmm. away that much tougher. Sure. You know, like mm-hmm. I've been at competitions or been in scenarios where I'm like, Maybe I'll be lucky enough that my knee will just fold the wrong way. Maybe my back will re-break. Mm-hmm. Like I know. A decision I, made for you. Exactly. There's no decision made. It's like, Mm -hmm. I know I can recover my knee. I know I can fix my back. I did it once. I'll do it again. Mm -hmm. But it takes that, like, is it the right time? Is it not the right time? Like, the decision is made for you. Um, Well, the the thing you've done really well, and and coming from somebody who I could have kept pursuing it, but an injury ultimately did in my career, mm -hmm. the difference is you have a lot better headspace, and you have a lot more perspective 
So whenever you, it is the time for you to walk away, you mm-hmm. are, you've already made peace with that. It sounds like, yeah. as opposed to just, it happens. Oh no, what do I go from here? Yeah. And like, I, I, I can definitely get tied up, you know, when you're in the bubble, I'm sure it was the guy, same with you guys. Like when you're in the league of like, your life is consumed by this, mm-hmm. yeah. your life is consumed by the people in the locker room. So it's like the natural thing to do is like taking other people's inventory. Like, yo, that motherfucker's been late for practice every day this week. <laughs> Fuck that guy. You know, just and just foolish shit like that. But because that's your bubble, that's right. It consumes you. It yes. will keep you up at night. Yeah, yeah. But then it's like, as soon as you like pop out of that bubble, you're like, who gives a shit yeah. that he was yeah. late? Yeah. yeah. You know, I think about like, you know, someone says something about me in an interview that I don't like. <sighs> that shit's keeping me up that night. Yeah. But then I like I, I don't know what it is, but something will just snap, mm-hmm. and usually it's just time. Like go get a night's sleep, yeah. and then you realize like, what the hell does that have to do with well, me? How does that like, affect me at is all? That, is that going to yeah. bother me in five years? Yeah. Probably no. not. Yeah. yeah. So why am I giving it yeah. five yeah. minutes of my why attention? Why are you? Look, that's are right. they paying a fucking mortgage? No. no. Exactly. Like that's just how it works. Yeah. I mean, yep. uh, look, I, we could go. <laughs> we yeah. go so long. <laughs> I got, I got, so I got a question, and 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 I want to so. You've, you've worked with a lot of sponsors. You've met a lot of fans. But let's say since 2017, right, like you, you win your second second competition, mm-hmm. what's like the weirdest request you've gotten from a fan or a sponsor or the media? Like, is there some like, I've gotten some weird stuff and I was a so, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so ever since I started dating Sammy and like, I don't hide Sammy or mm-hmm. anything like that. Like, like we do everything together. If I'm traveling 99% of the time, she's right there with me. Mm-hmm. So, uh, ever since like we've been publicly dating, mm-hmm. the weird stuff has kind of fallen off to the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I've had some very lucrative opportunities for like, like cam stuff. Fans only. Like this is like before fans only, but like, <laughs> but like just like some people being like, yo, you name your price per minute and like, I'll hey. pay you through PayPal. And then like, oh my that's God. what I'm saying. Like the you, weird stuff, like you show me your balloon knot for 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> and I'll pay you a million dollars. No, and I, I, remember, like, I, I used to get these offers cool. all the wow. time of like, Hey, wild. Like, we'll Skype and you tell me how much you charge no per way. minute. And I'm looking at Sam like, yo. That's good money. We can make a <laughs> killing. <laughs> you asked me 10 years ago, I'd do some pretty weird stuff for 10 grand. <laughs> I've done far worse for far less. Yeah, exactly. I'm, a, I'm offended. I've never been asked. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pissed. What a yeah, loser. What, what, yeah, what is, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that, we, we, that's pretty good. Yeah, we, really? we've, had, we've had people, like, show up at our house oh no that that's yeah, that's too yeah, much that one that's too much that was a little bit weird um just no boundaries yeah nothing crazy yeah. jumping out though yeah. i mean like that but, i mean that's more yeah, than no, i expected those to be honest with you like no, those I mean, were good before answers. sammy like yeah. there was some like weird sexual stuff yeah. yeah um you know like people be like hey like i'll pay you for your like your dirty underwear <laughs> you know, stuff like that <laughs> Again, uh-huh. keeps exceeding my expectations for the question. Still but it's pissed. true. But I mean, <laughs> you get some, and and you really like, like that's what gets you off, huh? There's some like yeah. weird, weird yeah, stank man. underwear weird weird since deals seventh grade. Out there. Yeah. Oh, whatever gosh, floats your boat, I guess. Yeah, I, guess. I, guess. I, guess. I, guess. I mean, I was going to throw them away. I mean, no, knowing you, it sounds like you probably wear the underwear for three, four years. Before. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I still yeah. got two years of life left. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dude, the waistband's still on. Yeah. Uh-huh. The elastic isn't all the way stretched out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to ask that yeah, final man. question? Again, yeah, we could go we could go on forever. And we appreciate your time, man. The question we love asking every guest at the end is this. If you could go back to any point in your life, we just went through your entire journey. If you could go back to any point and just tell yourself one thing. Doesn't mean you go change anything, but if you just tell yourself one thing, where do you go and what do you tell yourself? Ooh. Oh man, there there's a uh... There are several moments where I wish I could like just tell yourself eat my younger self. Um, you know, the typical question is like, you know, if you go back and change mm-hmm. one thing, what would yeah. it be? And it's like nothing, nothing. Now. Right. I'm aware. Um, I was talking to a friend about this the other day, uh, and I said, I was like, there are a, there are a lot of times 
that I had to apologize for and that I regret putting that person through what I put them through, Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't change a single fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I love who I am now. I love my life. I love everything about it. Like, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I would go back to probably when I was like 15, 16, something like that, and just tell myself like, everything's going to be okay. Mm. Um, I've had several moments, uh, you know, through my teenage years, my like early twenties where it was just hopeless. I Mm. like, not only was I in a bad situation, but I didn't know how it was going to get better or if it was ever going to get better. Mm. Um, but now looking back at those situations, just like, thank God they happened. Um, and you know, something as simple as like dealing with heartbreak, you know, the girl of your dreams dumps you or you find out she's cheating on you or whatever it was. And it was like, oh my God, like I'm never going to love again. Yeah. I want to go back and thank those ex-girlfriends. Like, thank you for dumping me. Mm-hmm. Thank you for breaking my heart because I wouldn't have met Sammy if it weren't for yeah, you. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I want to go good. back and thank like my weightlifting career. Like, yo, thank you for breaking your back and derailing my career. Because without that, I wouldn't have found CrossFit. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, those situations, uh, you know, like we have a sign in our house that says, like, thanks to all the bulls that bucked me off. Yes. And, and, it's, <laughs> and it's those situations of, like, yeah. like, those girls, like, when they dumped me or when I got broken up with whatever it was, it was a truly heartbreaking moment. Mm. And I didn't know how I was going to come back, especially when you're 16 oh, yeah, and you yeah. get dumb mm. and you're like, no, that, that was this the one. This is the worst one. thing yeah. ever. That yeah. was yeah. the yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And now I look back, I'm like, oh my God. God, you uh, saved me from such a mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I love about that? And we talk about this. There's a lot of things that we've, we've talked about, but that, you know, when you're going through it, it's hard to see that it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Right. But you look back One, a year from now, two years from now, and think, man, I'm so glad that happened. Yeah, like I, I, had, a, I had a situation a couple years ago that like just gutted me. Um, and there was nothing I could do about it. And you know, it hit me on so many levels. Uh, like, you know, it hit my, like my ego that, you know, I shouldn't have been there in the first place. Um, but it just tore apart, tore away the dream that I've been working for for so long. Uh, it hit me heavily financially, like all these things. Mm -hmm. And it was like, to the point that like for weeks, I just felt hollow. I felt like a shell of myself. I felt like everything was just a movie going on around me. And like, I mean, it's, I mean, Sam was there, like, we would just be sitting there watching TV for, like, a week, and I would just start crying. Like, I was so mm-hmm. broken over it. And I remember even that. I had enough life experience up to that point that I was like, I'm heartbroken over this. I don't know if I'll ever recover from it, but there will be a silver lining. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to see what I take away from this or what door this opens for opportunity or, like, I didn't know what it was. I was very sad. I didn't know how it was going to get fixed. But I remember sitting there crying and being like, I, I'm, I wonder what, like, I'm excited to see what silver lining comes from this. Mm-hmm. And I know it's only a matter of time before it does. And sure enough, it did. You know, it took, yeah. a, little, it took a little while, mm-hmm. but I would not go back yeah. and change that situation. Yeah. Um, right. Let's get clarity. Man, man. that perspective. Yeah. I and mean, that's, that's what you hope, you know, anybody listening, going through something can, can hear oh that. Oh, my God. I mean. And yeah, if, if you're going through some shit, it's like, keep going. Like, yeah. why would you, like, I think it's a country song. Like, why would you stop in hell? Yeah. yeah. Like, mm-hmm. keep you're going, going through hell. Going yeah. I was going to say, yeah. you made reference to three yeah. country songs yeah. in the last, you do in the last the, three, three minutes. <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, so what the conclusion of this episode is that life can be solved by country by songs. By country music. Yeah, yeah man. Well, <laughs> answer prayers. <laughs> your, your answers are in a country but, song. man, uh, yeah, honestly, yeah. Matt, thank it's you so much for coming in and, yeah. This has been an incredible story and, and time. And yeah, thank you guys we hope, me, we man. hope whether on air or off air, man, we get to hang out again because man, we, we had a great time. Absolutely. Guys. I mean, this, this is kind of a cool opportunity. I, like, I think you just DM me off Instagram. Yeah. Just DM you. Know, like, hey, yo, you slides in those DMs. Well, like, he, well, he, he told me, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to Matt. And I said, dude, he's got, there's no way. He's you know, what? It. there's, there's no way he'll see it. It's crazy how that we, we, you know, it was been a while. So we interviewed Rich when it was way early, way like early. Yeah. In a, in our first episode. One of the, we had interviewed him, and there was a girl that works in this restaurant. We may go to that restaurant after the show. Mm-hmm. Here. She's working in a restaurant. I told you about this. 
she came up and she was like, yeah, I saw, I listened to your, your the Rich Brony uh, episode. She's like, yeah, I'm a big CrossFitter. And I was like, oh, okay. And then there was, she brought in a couple of other girls who came mm-hmm. over. And one of the girls said, when are you going to have Matt on? <laughs> so I pick up my phone and I'm like, hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, it's, it's great, man, to, yeah. to, to hear your story. And, and man, again, we're about – you know, for us, man, just the journeys. We love to jer- hear the journeys. But mm-hmm. I'm so, I, you know, I'll put you in a category, and I, and I asked you a couple of questions based on the fact that there's a legacy here, man. Like, there's so many people that you don't even know that you've touched. Mm-hmm. There's so many people that did, have watched you compete, watched you, and seen so the I, highlights and all that just. I, I've been fortunate enough to have a close relationship with a couple people mm-hmm. that, you know, after a while, I have to st- start telling them, like, yo, yo, stop saying that stuff. It's mm. weird. Like, we're friends. You right. Know? Like, mm-hmm. But when they're, like, you're such an inspiration, this yeah. and that. But, like, I, I have one friend. He's lost over 100 pounds now. And it's, wow. like, he he finally came to me. He was, like, I'm sick of being the fat guy. Mm. How and, like, what do I do? And I was, like, come, come on over. And we'll just, I'll put you through a workout, you know. And, like, I, 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 I just started them on it. Mm-hmm. Um, because once again, like living a very selfish life, right. but just from that little dose, I saw the gratification I got from it mm. and yeah. the change that he's had in his life. And I'm like, that's, that joy. is, that's the joy. Yeah. yeah. I want to do something with this. Yes. Um, yeah. I want to keep chasing this feeling. Yes, so, sir. Um, that's the joy. you yeah. know, Tyler, between Darren, Matt and myself, there's eight world championships at this table. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, we appreciate you driving yeah, man. up, man. Absolutely, thank, thank, you. Guys. And thank Sammy, you guys for having me. Thank you, yeah, Sammy, yeah. you're the real MVP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.